So in this video we are going to be going over the tire for the T9 Automo blocks. Go ahead, create a new part file, save as into your T9 folder and call it tire. Take a look over at my model browser. You'll see that I used a revolve again to create the initial tire. Then I went ahead and I did an extrusion to create those little tabs around the interior diameter of the tire. Those help grip onto the actual rim, that's why those are there. Then I did a circular pattern to create the rest, added, added a fillet to the edges, did another revolve to create that center portion of the tread. Then I did something with a work plane out on the right hand side and created the uh, pattern that you're seeing going around and I used an emboss to do that. And then finally I did a circular pattern to create the rest. So that's something new. We've used an emboss, an emboss before, but it was mainly for text. So let's take a look at the OneNote binder. In here, you're going to see a top view with a half section in the front view. You got an overall height. You're given the fillets. You also see you got a detail view here and here as well. This detail view covers those little tabs that you're seeing as well as the overall diameter dimensions just a little bit easier to see when that uh, detail view is blown up and then this detail view is mainly focusing on those middle two rectangular treads that you see right here now I'm not giving you if you look at the note down on the bottom I'm not giving you all the dimensions to create this part of the tread I'm going to go over how I did it in the video and then you can just kind of follow along and if you want to design a custom tread right there you can do that on your own or you can follow along with me. Notice the material has also been changed up for this. It is a rubber silicone so that way it can kind of flex and move with the rim when we put it on the rim for the T9. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start out with a revolve and we're just going to create the outer uh, portion of the tire. We're simply just going to use a rectangle with a center line and add in some dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new 2D sketch on the right work plane. I'm going to draw a line straight to the right. The distance is 0.57. I'm going to change that to a center line. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle, but I'm going to snap it to the y-axis and make sure that I also reference that 0.57 line, just like so. And then now I need to figure out the inside diameter and outside diameter of the tire. So I'm going to go back here. Whoops, I want to go to the OneNote binder. So your inside diameter is going to be this one, which is the inside edge, not including those little tabs. So the inside is 1.24 and the outside is 1.44. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension those. So from here to here, we're going to have 1.24. And then for the outside diameter, from there to there, we're going to have 1.44. And then the last thing I need to do is lock down the bottom line here with a coincident constraint so I'm going to hit escape to get out of the dimension I'm going to go coincident constraint click on this line click on my origin and then now that will lock that down and I almost forgot I do need a dimension here which is 0.57 and now I got a fully constrained sketch I can finish and I can revolve I can say okay and now I got the general shape of the tire. So now for the next part, let's make those little tabs that are on the inside diameter of the tire for gripping purposes. All these little rectangular shapes. And if you notice, this top one is perfectly centered with the uh, center of the entire rim. So that's where I'm going to be working at. And I'm going to do a new sketch on that front face. So let's go sketch on this face. And I'm going to be working right here. So I'm going to zoom in on that area. Now one thing I do want to do is project geometry. So I'm going to project geometry. Uh, and actually, yeah, I'm going to project geometry of this inside circle right there. Hit escape to get out of that. 
Then I'm actually going to draw a circle that exact same size. So I'm going to go circle, snap to the center, drag it out, snap to that projected geometry, and hit escape. And then I need to draw an inside diameter for the inside of those tabs. So what does that mean? Well, if you look, this is the inside edge or the bottom edge of that tab right there, and that has a diameter of 1.18. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle, 1.18. And then now I have that inside edge, so now we just need to draw it in and add some dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a rough sketch right now. I'm going to draw a line uh, somewhere over here. Uh, along this edge of the circle and just draw a line down and then right click and say OK and then I am actually going to draw a construction line from the middle straight up say OK turn off the construction line so now I got a construction line there and then I'm going to just go ahead and mirror this now, and then any changes that I make to this side will automatically be adjusted. So I'm going to go mirror, click on this line, click mirror line, click on my construction line, hit apply, and say done. And then now I can add in some dimensions, so I'm going to go dimension. And from here to here, I'm going to add in an angular dimension. So in case you missed that, I went dimension. I click this line and then I click my construction line and now I'm doing an angular dimension and that should be uh, now we're in the middle of this so it's going to be half of that so it's going to be four degrees so I'm going to type in four because remember we're in the middle and you'll notice that it automatically adjusted this side as well and then there was a linear dimension right here which is 0 0.08 but again we're in the middle so it's going to be 0 0.04. So I'm going to go dimension. Now you need to make sure you click on this point and then the line. And then you can get your linear dimension and that should be 0 0.04. And you'll notice that that is looking pretty good. Um, I just need to trim. I'm going to trim all of this and trim all of this. So then I am left with my purple sketch. So that's good. So now I can finish, extrude. I'm going to click on this little tab, but I want to go the other way. And if you remember, our distance for this was 0.57. So now I can say OK. And then now I can use my circular pattern. Click my feature. Click on rotational axis here. Click on this inside circle. And how many of those were there? There are 15 of those. So I'm going to go 15. Say OK. And then now I have those tabs. Let's go ahead and do a quick save. And let's add in some fillets. So our fillets are 0 0.02. So I'm going to go fillet 0 0.02. Click on this edge. Click on that edge, say OK. And then now I want to add in the middle portion of the tread. And it kind of looks like just a rectangle with a little cutout in the middle right here. You can see it on the tire there. So we're going to do that next. And all your dimensions that you would need for that are right up in here. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to do now this I'm going to have to expand my origin folder and I want to turn on the visibility of this YZ plane because I want to do a sketch on that plane so I'm going to go 2D sketch and I'm going to click on that plane now so I'm working right in the middle of the tire and I'm going to be working up here on the top to add in that middle tread I'm going to zoom in up there and I'm going to project geometry of this top edge of the tire right here because I want to reference that. So I click there. You'll see it go yellow. Hit escape to get out of that project geometry. And then I'm just going to do a rough sketch of what that pattern kind of looks like. So it kind of goes up, over, down, and back like that. So that's what we're going to draw right now. We're just going to freehand it. Not really worried about the dimensions just yet. 
So I'm going to go line tool. I'm just going to start over here, go up, go over, go down a little bit, go back over. Just making sure I'm staying perpendicular, snapping and referencing the other lines. Come down, snap to that, and then I have to left click here again, and I need to close off the bottom. You have to make sure you do that, otherwise it won't uh, extrude later or revolve, actually, is what we're going to use to do this. So just make sure you draw in that bottom line. If you don't, you should see the purple line there. All right, so now we can add in some dimensions. Let's, uh, let's go with the overall uh, depth of this, which is that. And that is our total, if you add this together, would be 1. I'm sorry, 0 0.1. So I'm going to go 0.1. There we go. And then our overall height here is going to be 0.15. Oh, sorry, 0 0.015. Let me undo that. 0 0.015. There we go. And then let's do this dimension here. That should be 0 0.008, which I got from right there. And this dimension should be 0 0.047. Same thing on this side, 0 0.047. And then if we right click and show all degrees of freedom, all these green lines can move left to right. So what we want to do is lock down this shape from its midpoint to the midpoint of this projected line that we drew. So I'm going to right click, turn those back off. Then I'm going to hit escape, make sure you're out of the dimension tool. Drag a box around everything. And I'm going to use a coincident constraint. And I'm going to constrain the shape's midpoint right here, this bottom line, to the midpoint of the projected geometry, which is right there. So you should see two green dots. I clicked the midpoint first, and then now I'm clicking this midpoint, and you'll see now that that whole sketch moved over, and it's centered right in the middle of this line by using that coincident constraint. So now I can finish that sketch. I can revolve. I'm going to zoom in here, click on my profile, click on my axis. Now my axis, I'm going to have to, in the origin folder over here, click on the Z axis. If you notice, it's the middle. There you go. And then now you can see that middle tread that's being created. Say OK. And then I'm going to turn off the visibility of my X, or I'm sorry, my YZ. So I'm going to right click that so that's out of the way. Go ahead and do a quick save. And the last part that we need to do is add in the treads on this part of the tire and this part. So to do that, we need to create a work plane out here on the outside of the tire. And then we're going to emboss a shape that we're going to draw onto this portion of the tire. So Let's go ahead and, actually, I still needed that YZ plane on. I don't know why I turned it off. So let's turn that back on. And then I'm going to use a work plane. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to left-click, hold, and drag my mouse, so don't let go, out here past the tire. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to switch to a front view here. And you can see that it just needs to be on the outside of the tire somewhere out here. Okay, just as long as it's not in the middle here, it's on the outside, we're good. So I'm going to hit the check mark. Hit the home button again. Uh, I don't need this work plane anymore, so I'm going to right click the YZ, turn that off. And then now I'm going to do a new sketch on this new one that I just created. So let's draw some construction lines first. I'm going to draw a line, turn on construction, click my zero, zero, go directly to the right, 0.57. 
Okay, and then I'm going to draw another line in the construction. Make sure I'm snapping to the middle of this con original construction line and just go straight up you know, as high as you want up here. So now i got a construction line right down the middle. So one there and one there. Now that I have that, I can start drawing. I'm going to create a pattern on this side, and then I'm simply just going to mirror it to the other side. And... The first, I'm going to draw a line up. Uh, actually, first I'm going to hit the construction because I don't want this in the construction layer. So I'm going to go line. Now, one thing I want to watch out for is I don't want to draw, remember these two little rectangles with the tread that's going around the middle? So I want to draw to the left of that. So I'm going to go right about here or so, and I'm going to go straight down. I don't know. I'm just making up some numbers now. I'm going to go 0 0.06. Then I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to use the arc tool. And I'm going to go arc right here. And I'm going to left click somewhere along this inside edge. I don't want to go out to here because then my tread will be going all the way to the outer um, side, outer edge of the rim or tire. I'm sorry. So I want to snap somewhere on this line. You could pick wherever you want and then go ahead and left click. And then now we're determining the radius. Uh, I'm going to try 0.06 again. Uh, actually, I can't do 0.06. Uh, what do I want to do? How about 0.3? Let's try 0.3. Hit enter on that. And then I'm going to draw another arc from here to somewhere along this edge again. And then I'm going to drag that out. And this one, I don't know, I'm going to try, how about, let's add 0 0.06. That's going to be 0 0.36. And then I'm going to close this off right here. So I'm going to go Line Tool. I'm going to left-click this point, and then left-click this point. Now, I know that this is not fully constrained, but we're kind of just freehanding this. So I'm going to leave this as is. And then I'm simply just going to mirror this pattern over to this side. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the um, line tool. Drag a box around this to grab all your lines. And then I'm going to go mirror. And for my mirror line, I'm going to click. Make sure I grab the right one here. I want to click on this construction line right here in the middle. And then hit apply. And then now I have the same thing on the other side. And then I can finish my sketch. Next, we are going to do an emboss. So we're going to emboss. I'm going to click on this area here. Where'd you go? There it is. And then click on this area as well. So select those two. And I'm going to change the depth here to 0 0.01. And then I'm going to say OK. And then now you'll notice that it created that embossed shape on the edge of the tire. I'm going to turn off the visibility of this work plane. And then now we just need to do a circular pattern of those treads going around. So I'm going to go circular pattern. Click on those. Center axis. I can just click one of these circles down here. And it'll locate the middle axis. And this is where you got to try and play with some of the numbers. Um, I found for me that 45 was good. So when you're typing in your number here, you just want to make sure that you're not getting any overlapping of the tread as you look around it. So you just got to check for that. And then once you're good with the number, you found one you like, you could just say OK. And then now we got that nice tread on the outside. And I'm going to set up some materials here. So this one was rubber silicone. And then the black's a little dark. I'm losing some detail. So maybe I'll try the rubber blue. Looks a little bit better. I'm going to scoot this over. Update my eye properties. Save. And screen clip into the binder. So I can get my progress points and you're done with the tire.